Hello, everybody. We said we were going to take a break, and here we are eight days later with another episode because things happen in this world that we want to talk about. So uh, this is not a normal episode of No One Asked Us. This is just uh, a special because there have been some things with specifically Illini basketball that we feel we need and want to talk about. So here we are. This is uh, another episode of No One Asked Us. I'm Craig Choate. That is the logan lee on the other side of the screen for those of you on youtube if you're on youtube give us a like give us a subscribe while you're here you're already here only takes a couple seconds just hit the button uh the thumbs up down below and the red button that says subscribe down below as well we would really appreciate it Uh, we've been gaining a lot of traction so thanks to all of you that have been listening that have been watching and have been subscribing Our, our numbers continue to go up and we do really really appreciate that for those listening rate and review us on apple spotify wherever you get your podcasts again very much appreciate it. Um, Logan, it's been a little over a week. We were just talking about how we just can't stay away from each other. First of all, how you doing? Uh, I missed you. Are, are you enjoying the break that we took, the <laughs> two extra days that we took? Because we normally record on Mondays. Uh, <gasps> by the way, it, it is Wednesday evening. Um, Kofi's decision was earlier today, um, but both of us do have real jobs that we have to do. So we had to wait until we got off the clock to record this episode but um it is wednesday evening uh april 20th at time of recording all right how you doing logan well craig i'm doing great doing great hopefully uh the internet issues that have been slowing me down uh this evening will um improve uh throughout the course of this show um but uh, i'm great i'm great it's been a long time since we chatted uh you know we talked about this whole hiatus we were going to go on and while we both intend for this to there to be a hiatus i think we both also knew that this show was going to happen soon uh if it wasn't this week it was going to be early next week um so there's stuff to talk about we're just going to keep talking um don't know that this will be a normal show be a letting out our feelings talking about what's ahead for illinois basketball because some things happened today and over the course of the last few days that uh I need to, need to chat about. Yeah, we could have probably done a couple shows uh, in the span that we did our last show for things, but um, oh. this is this is the big one. Um, this is the one that we've been waiting on, and we knew it was coming because the deadline was Sunday for Kofi to make this decision. So um, here it is. Kofi did make his decision. Um, like Logan said, he is having some. Logan is having some internet issues. So if you hear a lot of me. Um, it could be because Logan's frozen on our YouTube screen or, or we're trying to get stuff figured out, but, uh, we're going to power through. It's going to be a quick one, I hope. uh, And we're going to get this out there, but yes, Kofi Coburn made his decision. He is entering his name into the NBA draft for the third time. Now he did it after his freshman year. He did it after his sophomore year. He came back both of those years. So we knew that if he entered his name in the draft again, he was gone. He could not pull his name out of the draft. If he went in again, And he announced this morning, early this morning, um, that he is entering his name into the NBA draft. He will not be eligible for uh, college. He's not going to the portal. There were, once again, a little bit of smoke that people were hearing that he was going to announce that he was coming back, but he was entering the portal again. I think Illinois fans and Illinois Nation would have lost their flipping minds if that would have happened. But it did not, so we don't need to talk about that. Um, Yeah, it, it is the outcome that I expected. Um, I just had a feeling um, that, you know, he is, he's been dead set on going pro for, for years now. He's entered his name three times or twice. He had already entered his name twice. He wants to go pro. And what a lot of people might not think of or realize he's 23 years old. He has another year of college eligibility, but he's already 23 years old. We talked about this last year when I said, I thought he might go pro last year. He was already in NBA draft terms. He was already old for his age if that makes sense it's not really a a good saying because you how are you old for your age but he is already an older college basketball player so he's not going to get any younger um i think it makes sense um i think what i i think i texted logan this um i know i tweeted it you know do i think he made the right decision it's hard to say because i don't know that there's a there is a spot for him in today's nba but it's not a starter 30 minutes a night spot for him. So I think coming back to Illinois would have been a better choice for him. He would have got to play a lot more and potentially he could have made more money. We don't know exactly if that's true or not. 
But do I blame the kid? Not one bit. He has nothing left to prove in college. He has done everything he can in college. So that's where I'm at on it. I was fully expecting it. The, sh- the decision did not surprise me. I wish he would have came back, but I don't blame him at all. Thanks for everything you did for the program, Kofi. Good luck. Go represent Illinois. Where are you at, Logan? Uh, very similar thoughts um, to what you just said. Um, first thing, and this isn't Kofi specific. But I would like to start a movement, a petition, if you will, that we stop using the phrase entering my name into the NBA draft. Um, Could Kofi Coburn get drafted in the NBA draft? Yes. Will he? I don't know. Um, My my best guess is no. But I, I just, we keep seeing this pop up. Everybody has their... Their, their, their posts that they throw up on Instagram and Twitter announcing, thanking their teammates and their coaches and the fans and announcing what they're doing next. I'm pretty sure Alfonso Plummer put up a similar post the other day saying he's entering his name into the NBA draft. I'm entering my name into the NBA draft. Like Trent did as well. That doesn't mean, like, let's just stop. Let's just stop with that. Let's just say I'm going to play professional basketball. Get it out of the way there because so I, I most think, of the go, 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 ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, go no, on. You go. I think with those two, with Plummer and Fraser, they didn't need those statements because no. they have no more college eligibility, right? Kofi, Kofi's decision. I think you have to officially, since he's an underclassman, you have to officially say, I am entering my name, right? And I hate it. I think it's dumb. I think we just need to say, I'm going to go play professional. I'm going to go play professional basketball. Like, I mean, could they, can they also do the, do they also do also make the same post and say, I'm going to law school. Like it doesn't, I don't know. I, I understand the purpose of it. You said like or, me right now. I understand the purpose of it. <laughs> the reason I'm saying this, the reason I bring this up is because most of the negative criticism that I saw in regards to Kofi's decision is, oh, he's not getting drafted. He won't have an NBA career. He's not an NBA player, whatever. I know. And I'm pretty sure he knows that too. It's, it sucks. And it's crazy to think about how much yeah. the NBA has changed five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Kofi Coburn lottery pick book it would have been a lottery pick after his sophomore year. That's not the same NBA anymore. So that's where my issue is. It's, it's all the, it, it, I didn't see a lot of it. Most of the comments that I saw were all positive. Like go get yours, like happy for you. Thanks for all you did. But I did see some of it that was, he doesn't stand a chance. He's not an NBA player. And I understand that. Um, my second thing here, and yes, money is certainly a factor now with NIL. Um, that was obviously on the table. It's very possible that he could make more in a fourth season in Champaign than he will playing basketball professionally anywhere. That's certainly possible. And you brought up the age thing, which is obviously an, an issue here too. And this is the guy that's talked about wanting to go play professional basketball for years. The other thing that we don't talk about very often, and I know it's kind of like ho-hum, whatever. He also doesn't want to be a college student anymore. Yep. Like, can you blame him? Like, yes, he could get paid and he can go, you know, try to win another Big Ten title and and try to run it back with Illinois and like do all these things. Yes, he could check all these boxes at Illinois for a fourth year, but he also has to be a student. And like, why? (laughs) If if you don't have to, why have to even pretend to go to class? Like if somebody offered me X amount of money or an equal amount of money, and the, the pros and cons were that I had to go take college classes or that I didn't have to go take college classes. Let's be honest. I'm going to take the option that's not take college classes. Um, I'm happy for the guy. I, I really am. Um, does it make me sad? Yes, obviously it does. Um, but I'm happy for him. He, as you have said, as everybody has said, he does not have much else to prove at Illinois. Uh, he has a, been a first and second team All-American. Um, he has been on two of the most successful teams this school has had in decades. 
ever. Um, his jersey's going to go into the rafters. Yes, another season he could have he could have checked some more boxes. He could have been the all time leading scorer. He could have been the all time leading rebounder. Might have led them to a national title, though that's probably not happening. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he gets a chance to go doing what he wants to do. I wish him nothing but the best. Um, but I, I can't blame him. I, I just, I can't blame him. He's wanted to do this for years and I'm happy that he gets a chance to do it. So yeah, that's where I stand. So the, I guess a little Kofi background, um, he committed to Illinois not long after one of the worst losses in program history. I don't know if you remember it. It was the Florida Atlantic home game Mm -hmm. in December of 2019. No, 2018, I believe. Because he would have – he was – December of 2018 was the Florida Atlantic game. Illinois lost at home to Florida Atlantic, and Kofi was there. That was his unofficial – or that was his official visit. And then he committed after Illinois lost another game to Northwestern. So he committed in the midst of the worst Illinois basketball season, the only 20 loss basketball season in Illinois basketball history. He committed during that. And Brett Barron's, I was at WCI at the time. Brett went to Virginia to Oak Hill and interviewed Kofi. And Kofi said, and Brett tweeted these videos out today. If you want to go back to Brett's Twitter, Kofi said, a lot of these programs want you because you're good. They, they want you to be a part of their team. Watching Illinois on that official visit when they lost to Florida Atlantic, Kofi said, Illinois needs me. Yep. That's all. You, that's all. I mean, that, that's crazy. That's crazy. He went and saw them play one, one of the worst teams in Illinois history. And he's like, that's a program that needs me that I can make an impact on. That's where I'm going to go. It was huge. Um, I did a little research uh, around my lunch break today. Um, some of Kofi's stats and where he's at. So this, there, I got a lot of them here. Um, he scored 1,546 career points, which does not get him in the top 10. Um, he's just outside of it, I think. Io is not in the top 10 either. Um, he scored like 12 or 13 more points than Io or something like that. Um, but his 20.9 points per game this season is the 10th best single season all time. His 17.2 points per game in his career is the ninth best of all time. He has 30 20-point games, which is seventh best, and he had 15 this season, which is the eighth most in single-season history. So his name's all over the points record books, just not career points. Um, He's fourth all-time in career field goal percentage, Um, 59.6 for his career. Um, He's 10th all-time in field goals, 591 field goals. He is third all-time in rebounds. And total rebounds. He would have broken that record, likely, had he had just another Kofi season. He would have broken that record. He has 861 rebounds, so third all-time. Behind Augustine has the record. I don't remember who was second, but James Augustine has a little more than 1,000. And his 9.6 career rebound average is tied for sixth all-time at Illinois. We already talked about the double-doubles, 45 career double-doubles. That is the most for Illinois. He had 17 this year which is uh, tied for fourth for a single season. He had nine in a row this season. Do you remember that run? Nine in a row from December 3rd to January 14th. He had double-double. He had 16 last year um, for fifth. He's eighth all-time in blocks. And the stat that – or one of the stats that came out today from the boardroom that I think is just what I tweeted was – it's actually unbelievable that this is the case. Kofi never lost to Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Penn State, Nebraska, or Northwestern. He went 28 and 0 against those six teams. Six of the 13 Big Ten opponents Illinois faces have never beaten Kofi Coburn. And the top two of that the top two of that list is pretty impressive alone. Yes, Michigan and Wisconsin. Yes. He went 44 and 16 in the Big Ten. And that's coming off of, like I said two or three of the worst Big Ten seasons in Illinois history. The dude is a program changer. Program changer. Thoughts on his his records here that he's going to have? He's a legend. He's an Illini legend. Um, I, I don't think anybody 
I don't think anybody really knew what we were getting when he came to Champaign. Um, he was not a five-star player. Um, he was a big bodied guy who didn't have a ton of basketball experience under his belt. Um, and he just, he came on to the scene and just, just emerged and it was incredible. It was incredible to watch him work. Um, I mean, it's hard to even fathom the thought that him and Io are two of the greatest to ever put that jersey on. And they were on the court at the same time um, for two seasons. Was it two seasons? Yeah, two seasons. Yeah, two seasons. Um, like, that's pretty incredible. Now, granted, yeah. you know, what didn't come from those two <laughs> being on yeah. the court. Uh, yeah. But still, like just to be able to look at back at that and just think yeah. about that. Um, I mean, him and him and Io changed changed the course of this program. Um, it was it was absolutely dead. This program was at rock bottom, uh, the lowest it had ever been, um, and they built something, and it was pretty incredible. Um, the double doubles speak for themselves. He was, I mean, he was, I mean, I've already talked about how his game, you know, may or may not translate to the NBA, but at this level, there aren't many guys that can stop him. No. And the Big Ten, no. the Big Ten had some of the best post players in the country. Yeah. Um, and sure, I mean, he had, he had off nights. He had nights that they were able to contain him a little more and um, they relied too much on him uh, this season, I think. Uh, if, if he wasn't, if he wasn't clicking and the threes weren't hitting, uh, that was it. <laughs> that was yeah. the entire offense. Um, so you would have loved to have seen them be, be able to do, to do a little bit more around him. Um, but he's, he's a legend. He's an yeah. absolute legend. Uh, his Jersey will hang in those Raptors. They, they will not oh. retire his Jersey. Let's just throw that before <laughs> that, before that word gets thrown out again next year, like it did this year with IO. His jersey will not be retired. Somebody else can wear the 21, uh, but it will hang in the rafters with all the other Illini greats, uh, as it should, as it should. He's a first-team and a second-team All-American, all-conference player, um, one of the greatest on the court. He should have been a unanimous All-American this year, first team. Um, somebody, I think CBS or somebody didn't have him first team. So Probably Seth Davis. He's pretty stupid. Uh, but – I'm happy for him. It, I mean, he's he's an absolute legend. Um, so I should have prepped you for this because this is something that you're probably not going to be able to come up with off the top of your head, but I just thought of it. Warren Carter. What? Well, no. You're, whatever that answer, whatever you thought the answer that, that – whatever you thought that answer was going to be, it's not what I'm going to ask. Favorite what is – before Kofi Coburn, Warren Carter. No. Warren Carter. What is your favorite or most memorable Kofi moment? Or is there a moment – from Kofi that sticks out to you or a game that sticks out to you or anything. I don't know that I have one. I don't know if you had one on that, that you think of, or when you hear Kofi, what do you think of or, or anything like that? I mean, this is silly. This is a silly answer. Cause it, like, uh, Kofi's a silly dude. It so. doesn't represent <laughs> Um, the way he played that game or anything he did on the court. And it's really more so about a different player. But the first thing I will probably think about for a long time is the post game interview with him and Georgie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where Georgie just keeps saying amazing, amazing, amazing. And Kobe's just there laughing. <laughs> like he just, <laughs> I don't know. That's yeah. just a really stupid answer, but like, that's one of the first things that comes to my head just about him. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, that's that's who Kofi is, you know. Yeah. I I covered him for one year. Um, uh, yeah, the the 2019 2020 season I covered him, um, and that's just the way he is. He's a goofball, uh, and you had him and Georgie together, and holy cow! I remember texting Brett after that happened. It might have been during while it was happening. I was like, this is great content, but it has to be a nightmare for you because there was like no usable right. quote in that, but. Right. That's just the way they are. Uh, Robert Rosenthal tweeted out a video from the shoot around at the tournament this year where Kofi, he p runs around and starts playing a game of tag with one of the managers. Um, he starts throwing half court shots and 
he he dunks it and he like he's on the rim and he's just shaking the rim. The rim's about to fall off. So um that that's probably that's a good one just because that's who he is. Um one of the things that they don't keep stats of is dunks. I'm sure he has the Illinois record in dunks. So there are some crazy dunks that I'm probably gonna remember. So so yeah, there's that. Um I don't know that there's much else we can say other than and we kind of fleshed it out a little bit. I think he'll get a chance with the NBA team. Oh yeah. He should I he should. I, I think he could play he could play 20 minutes in the NBA. Yeah. I think I really think he could he can. But I texted this to my my group chat the other day. I'm watching the NBA playoffs right now. And it was one night there was a it was Saturday or Sunday. It was a quadruple header. So four games back to back to back to back. And I don't know that Kofi can guard any of the centers on those teams. Yeah. Because they're all quicker. They're all out on the three-point line in the mid-range. So he's got things he needs to improve on, but he's going to be tough to stop just because he's so big. But there are guys his size in the NBA. So it's going to be a challenge. I think he's going to be up for it. I think he'll get a couple shots in the NBA. I don't know that he, he's definitely not going to have the career Io's going to have. I was going to play for 10, 15 years because he's just so consistent. Kofi might get five years here, uh, maybe like a Myers Leonard type career um, as far as, you know, minutes and, yeah. and chances he gets. But um, I, like you said, five or 10 years ago, DeAndre Ayton was the number one pick five years ago. He's a center. He's a big, I don't know that he can shoot threes. He's very Kofi like Kofi esque, but just right now it, it's not going to happen. I did put up a poll on my Twitter at Craig W. Choate. Will Kofi get drafted when the draft comes around? Majority, vast majority say no, and it's reaching 100 votes right now. So I think we're on the same page there. Um, anything else Kofi-related? There are two other Illini things we want to talk about. Uh, yes, two quick Kofi-related things. Okay. One, um, he made his, made his announcement first thing this morning. Um, yeah. It was like 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock for us in the East. Um, so kind of had to ponder it all day. Uh, we knew it was coming. Um, so like, I wasn't shocked, not surprised. I wasn't really upset. Uh, I was like, my reaction was, all right, let's move on. Yeah. I'll admit though, when Oscar announced he was staying, I kind of got a little more sad <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. I just thought, of, I know it's not like an apples to apples comparison. Um, Oscar Shibwe kind of came onto the scene really this year. Uh, Kofi had last year kind of under his belt. So like, again, not apples to apples, but like that kind of made me a little more sad when, when I heard that just because they're two comparable players that have probably similar futures in the NBA. Um, and Oscar decides he's going to stick around at, at Kentucky for another year. And Kofi's out the door. Uh, Did you see what Jeff Goodman tweeted? about that no, i don't know maybe um goodman tweeted Os kentucky's oscar Sheway is coming back to lexington for another season the power of nil especially at kentucky and then he quote tweeted himself he said oscar Sheway will likely earn in the neighborhood of two million dollars this season through nil sources told stadium which is who goodman works for now is stadium and I saw that. I sent it to my buddies. I saw it. My first thought was, pardon my French, I call bullshit. I don't think any college player will make $2 million. I think it's hard to make $1 million, even at Kentucky. So I don't think that's going to happen. I do know Kofi was asking for a lot. He was trying to figure out how much he was going to get from Illinois, and he wanted a lot in NIL. And the people I have talked to that kind of know what's up with NIL – say that these kids are being told, like, like we said last year, they're being told they're going to get X number of dollars and they get a, they actually get a fraction of that. So I find both of those numbers hard to believe. So that's where I'm at we'll with, see. with Oscar. It's still a very uh, new thing. So who knows? Uh, the second thing, it's not nearly as important. I just found it funny when I noticed it today. Did you notice that both you and I used uh, new girl gifts uh, when to quote tweet <laughs> announcement tomorrow thing yesterday. Yeah. yeah. I didn't notice it till this morning. Um, <laughs> it's just ironic. It had, I, 
I had no intention when I did that. I hadn't even seen yours. I didn't, I was just looking for, for a particular thing. And I just thought that was funny that we both, I just, I just typed in freaking out. I typed in whatever happens happens and I got CC from new girl. So I love it was CC. funny that, uh, that happened. So, all right, that's it. Moving on. Um, all right. Good luck, Kofi. Thank you for everything you've done. We are all going to be rooting for you. Um, and I know you'll, I know he's going to have a long career. It's just, um, don't know if it's going to be in the NBA or, or overseas or, or whatever. I mean, Georgie's playing in the G league. Kofi can make it at least in the G league. I think Kofi gets a two way contract is what, is what my prediction is. I agree. The other thing that we have not talked about with Illinois um, since our last episode, Brandon Pajemski did enter his name into the transfer portal transfer portal um, one day after we recorded our last episode. Our last episode was on the 11th, but Jimski entered the portal on the 12th. Are you surprised? Um, I'm only surprised because the backcourt has no depth. Yeah. So I guess I'm surprised that he didn't wait to know more, or maybe he knows more. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, as it stands right now, they have three guards on this team. That's it. That's it. Um, I mean, Luke Goody can play the two, but like even that, that's four. So. Yes, there are still holes to fill. So I think at the end of the day, Brandon Pajemski wasn't going to get the minutes that he wanted, and that's fine. Um, but as of and now, and even when he decided to make this decision a week ago, he was in line for good playing time. Um, but as I said, I, I think that will change. I think they will bring in people. They have three scholarships open now, so you have to assume they're bringing in at least a guard or two. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, as, as of this moment, they have three guards on this team. So if nothing else happens, if they don't bring anybody in, uh, he would have, he, he would have gotten good minutes and he would have been the only player in that backcourt with actual college basketball experience. So, yeah. uh, so am I surprised at the time, given the circumstances? Yes. But at the end of the day, no, uh, I think he made the right, I think he will end up he will have ended up making the right decision. Yeah. Um, I I think he, while he had the most experience of the three slash four guards on the roster, I think he has the least talent. Yeah, no, that's fair. So I think he saw that. He saw, you know, they're hitting the transfer market hard. They, they wanted Brandon Murray, who's a guard. Um, they wanted the, I think his name was Williams from Temple, who ended up going to Iowa State. They wanted him, or they were in on him. They keep con- recruiting. Courtney Ramey is a guy that they're trying to get, so they're, they keep recruiting these guards, and Pods is like, all right, I'm here. You're recruiting transfers. You have three freshman guards coming in. Like, I see the writing. So I think he saw the writing. I think the coaches told him, hey, we're not going to hand you this just because you've been here. We're not going to hand you all this playing time. you got to earn it. So, uh, yeah, not surprised. Um, I loved it when they got him just because he, he had potential. And I think he's still going to be a good division one guard. Um, the day after he hit the portal, his AAU coach was tweeting. He's had coaches from all of the power six conferences, including the top mid majors contacting him, trying like to set up meetings and stuff. So he's going to land at a good spot. Um, I'm glad he came to Illinois. It didn't work out. That's what it is. I mean, that's a product of where this program's at. You're going and bringing in three top 100 guards. um, And that's just, it's going to keep coming. It's going to keep coming. Um, I I don't have a gauge on where he's going to go though. I haven't really heard him. Normally, you know, there's these John Rothstein's tweeting out where these recruits or where these transfers are visiting or had a meeting with this person and all that. I haven't seen anything of specific schools for pods. So I have no idea. I think he could land at a lower level uh, power conference team, um, or he could go be a stud at a mid major. Because I think he could start right away at a, at a mid major school. Yeah. So um, we'll see. Um, I I don't have a guess on that one. Um, no. Something else? No, but I just thought about something that we didn't talk about before the show that to put on your rundown that we might want to touch on too. Okay, let's um, do the last thing here. Um, 
we did talk about Sky Clark committing to Illinois. And Illinois got another Clark. They got ZZ Clark, the younger brother of Sky. Um, he is a class of 2024. So that makes two class of 2024 commits for Illinois, him and Marez Johnson. And they have zero class of 2023 commits. So class of 2024 is going to be done before 2023 is going to be done. Um, he is not ranked on any services, I don't think. Um, he's a point guard like his brother. I think he's a little bit shorter. He might be six yeah. one, um, and and not as not as muscular. Sky's Sky's built. Sky Sky's a big guard. Um, Zizi, I think, is a little more finesse. Um, and did you read his um, his Instagram post when he committed? Did or did you just see the picture and like it? Uh, I mean, I've I read plenty of things. Is that we talk about the part where he said he always was an Illinois fan or something like that? Yeah. Said he yeah. said he's always been an Illinois fan. Um, he liked IO, um, which always and IO doesn't really line up <laughs> because IO was just a couple of years ago. No, um, I, I but don't he, buy it. he did I like say to hear that, it, but I don't buy it. Yeah, he did say that he wanted to commit to Illinois a while ago. They offered him in the summer. He wanted to commit a while ago, but he wanted his brother to commit first, which he did last week. And then they each set up their uh, visits because neither of them had been to campus. Um, Sky played in the Jordan or didn't play, but Sky was at the Jordan Brand Classic in Chicago on Saturday or Sunday. And then Monday, they just drove down from Chicago, came to Champaign. And while they were in Champaign, ZZ committed to Illinois. So uh, another good get. Um, give Tim Anderson all the raises, give him all the promotions, give, <laughs> give him whatever he wants because he is uh, really, really showing out for uh the Illini in recruiting um so far do, do you have any any thoughts on ZZ other than um it, it's a good start no I mean I don't totally understand <laughs> how some guys are ranked in the system and how some guys aren't um I don't get that but whatever um my thought really... on that is because because Illinois Nation Illini Nation flipped out on it and I had a couple people text me and be like why are you guys freaking out for a dude that's not even ranked i think because they're so young they just haven't fully been scouted yet I mean, that like makes the, sense i mean i like assume the that's the answer yeah the national scouts haven't seen them so instead of taking a guess they just don't rank them so once they get the full scout in they'll give them the rating and everyone will just bump down one once they're once they are fully yeah. scouted so that's my guess. Um, I think he he's not at Montverde. He is at something prep. Yeah, I don't know. In, in Florida. Windermere, I think. Yeah. Is it Windermere? That's I don't know. That's sounds- Windermere, something down by Orlando, which is where Montverde is. So so yeah, uh, a couple Clark uh commits for Illinois. Do you have anything else on that? No, not pertaining to him. I mean it's it's right. it's exciting though, you know, to know yeah. what they're building um yep don't as you said don't really know like how good he's going to be but just the fact that they're getting in you know this two early commits like this um that's i mean definitely nice do you remember like three years ago where it was like three months before the season and they still had two open scholarships and you take jermaine hamlin and uh there was a guard who was the they took some some guard that everyone was like i think i don't know to have commits locked in like years in advance and like not have to worry. Like everyone's like, I don't want to say Illinois is freaking out. A lot of nations freaking out because I think they, uh, the majority knows that the program's in a good spot, but like, I have no concerns about this staff's ability to put a roster together. No, none, none. I mean, they just lost a two time all American. I mean, it, which, you say that like, yeah, he should go, but like, we're not, we don't, we're not worried. Like it's going to change everything. Speaking of let's get into that. How do things change with the roster without Kofi? Because I think, and I hope that the games we watch next year are going to feel completely different. Yeah. Without Kofi in the middle. It's going to have a different look for sure. Um, now that's obvious when you lose somebody like Kofi, um, but Brad Underwood really had to change his coaching style yeah. to accommodate an All-American center like Kofi. Um, 
I don't know what the five is that's going to be on the court to start the season. We have a guess at about three of them, probably at least, maybe four. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be different. There's going to be it's going to have a different feel to it. There's going to be some more length there. Um, they're going to be able to mix and match a little bit. They still have to add some pieces. I mean, as I as I mentioned earlier, there's still three open scholarship spots. Um, so they they definitely got to add pieces still. Uh, but you don't there aren't very many Kofi Coburns out there. So you're not going to go, you're not just going to replace him with somebody at that level. Um, so whatever you, whoever you bring in most likely to help in the paint is going to be a different type of player and it might free things up. I'm not going to say Illinois is going to be better next year, but they might have some, a different upside that they haven't had in the past. Yeah. Um, the, the past few years, it's been about, Six two guards that can shoot, and one of the best post players in the country, and figure it out from there. And they don't really have a lot of that right now. So yeah, um, it's going to have a totally different feel with whatever those rotations end up being and whoever else they bring in. This year specifically was a lot of four out, one in. Kofi has to touch the ball at least once and see what happens. Um, we, we used to joke two years ago, we joked if Kofi touches the ball, there's three outcomes made basket turnover or a foul. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that yeah. too. Uh, a, a shot, a turnover or a foul were the, right. were the outcomes because he was not passing it out this year. He started to pass it out a little bit more, not a ton, a little bit more. And that's what he's going to have to work on at the next level that and a free throw extended line jumper. But this coming season, it's going to be a lot of five out five out around the arc and instead of a post feed and a kick out it's going to be drive to the lane see what defender collapses on you and kick out so still need to find a shooter um they're going to have to have a find a shooter i think they're going to have to find a instant impact guard which we talked about with the whole pods transfer because you've only got freshmen you gotta have you gotta find a transfer guard that can come in and immediately um plug into potentially the starting lineup um, and take some ball handling duties. And you need some sort of big to kind of replace Kofi a little bit, not replace Kofi because you're not going to replace Kofi. But right now you've only got Dane Danger and Brandon Lieb um, as the big bodies down low. So I, I think a big, an impact one point guard that can come in and a sniper to come in. And those are your three spots. Also, we haven't touched on Austin Hutcherson and Jacob Grandison that have not made their decisions yet. They right. could both come back for another year. Grandison comes back. I think that'd be great. That's a good fit. Hutcherson. I think it's just best to move on. Don't you? Yeah. I mean, I know how you feel about him, but he's a figment he's of your a, imagination. He's an enigma. I don't know what he <laughs> is. I don't know so. who he is. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. There's, there are currently three holes to fill. And I think there are three big holes. Yeah. Um, you have to be excited about RJ Melendez, um, Coleman Hawkins, Luke Goody, that combination of guys. Um, I think that they're really ready to take that next step, especially, especially RJ and Coleman, um, Dane danger brings another post presence, um, a different type of post a little bit, but he bring he at least gives you somebody down there, um, and then you have these three freshman guards that you're, you're pretty high on a couple of them. Um, and you expect a couple, at least a couple of them to come in and play right away, but you need somebody else around them. Um, yeah. There's no experience in that backcourt. Um, I, I don't know what the answer is. There's obviously plenty of guys out there um, that could fill any of these spots. Some of these names that we've heard that we've kind of said, mm, probably not going to make, probably doesn't fit may fit now um yep. My I, first don't know thought. That, I don't know that they would still be the best fit because i still think some of these players that we've talked about or that has been brought up um would probably shift coleman to be in a pretty regular at the five yeah which i don't think it's the worst thing in the world but i would really rather him be playing the four yep um in my opinion so i think that's where somebody like a terrence shannon or, I mean, we haven't really talked about him. I don't think it's happening, but like a Bryce Hopkins, both of those shift Coleman to the five. Um, 
regularly, like not just like getting minutes at the five, like that would be your starting five. Um, again, it, it would be a totally different style. Uh, if you're playing a team, if you're, if your rotation has Coleman Hawkins at the five, it's going to be a very different look um, than, than what you've been used to the last three years. So, um, I mean, there's, you, you mentioned, there's still Grandison and Hutcherson out there potentially that could come back. Um, Shannon's a name that we've talked about before and Courtney Ramey. Um, Bryce Hopkins is out there. Uh, the kid from Ohio that's transferring um, that lit up Illinois a couple of years ago. He would be yeah. a potential option at the four. Um, I mean, there's guys there. I, I don't know about the sharpshooter though. That's I don't, the, I that's don't the issue. I don't think there's an Alfonso Plummer out there. No. Um, there are some names. I'm sure you can find guys that can shoot. I, I, it's not that yeah. none of these guys can shoot, but I don't think you're going to find a, a sharpshooter like a Alfonso Plummer or even a Trent Frazier. Um, the one that's that close out there. as far as that goes is a guy from Oregon State. I think his last name's Lucas. Yeah. And I can't find his first name, but they've been in on him. Um, he is probably their best option for a shooter. Um, there aren't really any bigs per se. There's not very many bigs. I know we said that we don't want another four, but KJ Williams is listed as a center. Illinois is not connected with him. Um, Efton Reed from LSU listed as a center. Haven't heard Illinois with him. Fardal's AMAC is a name that I loved early, but Illinois has not been connected with him. Um, a guy from Washington State, no connection with Illinois. Um, there's just not a ton of centers. The best Man- option would be Manny Bates. Manny Bates. Yeah. At NC State. And I did see Illinois on his list. Um, this has been like a week ago. I haven't heard anything lately. But um, going around Twitter was Illinois did check in with him. Um, so there's just not a ton of centers. So it might be you just take – a uh, power forward like Bryce Hopkins and just have him and danger and Hawk and um, Hopkins Hawking and danger just kind of rotate in the five uh, some combination of them at four and five the game and then if you want to go small only one of them in the game so so yeah that's um that's kind of where we're at I think let's run through it just real quick and then we'll close this down this is not including Hutcherson and Grandison, but this is where the roster stands right now without Hutcherson and Grandison. At the guard spot, you've got Sky Clark, Jaden Epps, and Sincere Harris. At the guard slash forward spot, Luke Goody. And then at the forward, you have Coleman Hawkins, Melendez, Ty Rogers, Benjamin Bossman's Verdonk. And then at center, you've got Danger and Lieb. And I think Danger is probably on that can play four or five. So Lieb's the only true center on the team, but that's where we're at. So hearing that before all these, if Illinois does not get the type of players that they want, if all these transfers decide to go elsewhere and Illinois doesn't get a guard, doesn't get another shooter or a wing or another big, and they just get some mid-major roster fillers, is that team a tournament team or a top half of the Big Ten team? On paper, going into the season, I say no. Um, I think in my mind, I'm hoping and praying that RJ Melendez has some sort of Keegan Murray breakout (laughs) um, or Johnny Davis breakout. Uh, I I think you need that to happen, regardless of who they bring in. Um, there's, There's nobody out there right now likely that's going to come in and be a first team all big 10 player um i could be wrong there there i I shouldn't say that there probably are some people that could be that but i don't know that they're coming um so i don't i don't really know why i'm just like hoping and praying that this happens um i don't know i as of right now i have a hard time seeing them that high I just certainly do not think they're a top 25 team right now, the way it sits as of no. this moment, the way it sits. Yeah. No. Uh, they, as we've said, there are at least a couple of spots to fill here. So it's possible they could bring in somebody that is that big of a difference maker. Um, 
but as the roster sits right now, you're starting two freshmen at the guard spots. Um, unless you end up starting Goody there, which could, but um, I think it's a bubble a team. Not a lot of experience. Uh, yeah, I think it's a I bubble mean, right, team right I, now. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say no. I would lean yes, but it would be. Like it w- we would be sweating on selection Sunday, but I don't think that's going to happen. They're going to add pieces. Um, ideally, is there – give me two names that you want Illinois to add, transfer names. Who are your top two? I mean, I think best-case scenario, it's probably Manny Bates and Courtney Ramey, right? I mean, maybe – I guess Taryn Shannon would be in that mix too. Um I, I don't know. Uh, you need a post. You need a post player, I think. Uh, maybe if it's not Manny Bates, if you can get by with, with that rotation at the five, if you can trust it, I would try to add somebody. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the best combination would be. You need a guard. You need somebody that can handle the ball. That's why I think it, I think you have to go after Courtney Ramey. He may not be the best player on the board, but I think for what this team needs, he probably makes the most sense. He's probably going to be the guy that has the most ball handling experience. Um, he's an older guy. He can just help run the show. Yes, I know the post presence is going to be a big deal because you're replacing a lot. But I think that position is still more important right now, filling that spot. The veteran guard that can handle the ball, help take some of the pressure off the two freshmen. So, in my opinion, I say Courtney Ramey is number one for that reason. Okay. Again, I don't think he's the best player available, but for no. what they need, I think he has to be number one. And then okay. from there, you just decide what you need more. Um, if it's another wing or if you need to go for a, a post player that can come in and, and contribute right away. Um, or maybe go after all three. I don't know. But yeah. you, what say you? I like Ramey. But I think if you can get Tyrese Hunter from Iowa State or Yuri Collins oh. from St. Louis, that's yeah. who you go. Those get. are those are a couple new names. That just those are new names. Just the last couple of days. Yesterday, yeah. Tyrese Hunter is a bulldog, man. Yeah, um, no, that, State, that changes things. Um, and I like Yuri Collins, facilitator, not a score first guy. He led the country in assists last year from St. Louis. Um, but I think both of them hit the transfer portal knowing where they're going to go. And I don't think it's Illinois for either. Yeah, so I, I'm with you on Ramey. I'll go with I you I didn't there. even put, I have a list going of guys that I think <laughs> Illinois should, that I have, I have a running list of what the depth chart is currently, like probably exactly what you have, but I also have this list of guys that yeah. may be in the picture. And I didn't even add either of them just because I don't think. I don't think it's going to happen. That's happening. Yep. So. Um, but if you can pull them, please go get them. But I'm with you on Ramey. Adam Miller? No, no. <laughs> I just – I lean more towards like a Bryce Hopkins or Terrence Shannon instead of a center. I'd be fine with that. I really yeah. would. If you That's can make I'm that leaning. happen, if everybody's happy, if everybody can agree to that, um, that's a different-looking team. And I, mean, I, that is I would a, love to see that it. That is see how a it works. long – that team's got a lot of length, man. I, I would be fine with that. I really would. Uh, if you're, if you're comfortable with Dane danger and, and Coleman Hawkins playing the five, um, and BBV sliding in there, like, okay. If, if that's, if, if that's what happens, I would be okay with it. I think I would. I think I would. All right. We'll see. Um, that's all we've got for now. Um, again, it's April 20th. There's going to be a lot of change. We just talked about a potential of a ton of new things. So we are still on hiatus for our weekly shows. Um, But if, if news happens like it just did today, we will hop on. We will get you something uh, in a timely fashion for those big news days. Anything else, Logan? Yes, you do. We didn't talk about Andre Curbelo. Oh, yes. Curbelo made his decision. And you predicted it. I predicted it before he hit the portal. (laughs) I predicted it a week before he officially put his name in the portal. I said, St. John's is the perfect spot for him. It's in his hometown. Um, They run an AAU style offense. They don't run anything really coordinated. You just go. And that's where he's going. So 
Um, good luck to him. I think he's going to be great there. As long as they can put up with his eight assists and five turnovers per game, um, I think he'll be great. Playing in Mass, they play in Madison Square Garden, right? Yeah, yeah playing at MSG. I mean, I love it. I love it for him. Um, I think the the breakup was the right time for Illinois and for Curbelo. So good for him. I'm with you. I'm with you. They, have, need have you updated... they need a shooter in that team. Sounds like yeah. there's a couple couple very comparable point guards gonna be running that show. So have you updated your your picture with all the X's yet? Yeah, I did it today. Oh, okay. Um so, one other thing, actually, I tweeted this and I haven't sent it out yet. Um, who did I send this to? I think I sent it to him. So I found the picture from Media Day uh 2019 so 2019 2020 season there are there's one coach and one player left from the 2020 team and one of the players then became a coach the only player left from the 2020 team which was just a couple of years ago is benjamin bossman's for donk the only coach left obviously is brad underwood but then tyler underwood went from player to coach so, brand new era. Absolutely brand new era. What are we calling the era that we just came from? The resurgence? It has to be. That the has renaissance? To be. The rebuild? The Illini renaissance. Well, that was the name of the football renovation. Mm. So, resurgence? I say re- resurgence or rebuild, I guess, is what I would go with. Uh, the rebuild so is over. Okay. Now That's what you're, I'm saying. You're so in a this new is over now. I don't know yeah. what this era is going to be. I have <laughs> <Wow>. no clue. <laughs> no clue what's happening now. <clears throat> That's what we're here for. We'll let it play out and see what happens. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Um, thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hopefully, we, you learned something and had we, we told you something you didn't know and kind of reminisce about Kofi and his career and where Illinois basketball is now compared to where it was five years ago. Um, Like and subscribe, rate us, comment down below what you think of Kofi, if he gets drafted, where you want to see him go, any of that good stuff. Just interact with us and we'll, we'll, we'll message you back. We'll comment, um, comment you back. But um, for now, I don't know when we're going to see you again, but for now, I'm Craig Shope. That's Logan Lee. We'll see you next time. Don't know when it's going to be. I'll miss you, Kofi.